वेलकम सो वी वुड कंटिन्यू विद आर लेक्चर्स ऑन स्टार्टिस्टिक्स एंड अंडरस्टैंड टुडे अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक व्हिच इज हाउ टू वी टेस्ट अ हाइपोथेसिस व्हाट एक्चुअली इज अ हाइपोथेसिस सो व्हेन एवर वी से देयर इज अ प्रिडिक्शन व्हिच इज इंटेंडेड टू टेस्ट अ रिसर्च देयर इज वेयर वी से देयर इज हाइपोथेसिस इन वेरी सिंपल टर्म्स वी से इट इज अ टेंटेटिव सॉल्यूशन दैट आई एम ट्राइंग टू गिव टू अ रिसर्च प्रॉब्लम दैट लाइज इन whenever you have a research problem we begin with understanding the very fundamentals of whether to use a population or a sample as we had discussed in our previous lectures on statistics you have the whole group which is considered as the population of this population we have a limited section on which we actually do the research and that is what we call as sample so whenever we are doing a hypothesis testing it is very very interesting that we study a outcome on a sample of population and that outcome we try to apply to the whole group of the population so whatever research whatever a uh, test we are trying to do is on to the sample and this sample when it is applied to the whole population we say we are testing the hypothesis and this is how we understand the process of hypothesis testing again a very interesting word is theory what actually is theory it is a set of principles that are meant to explain the very very important processes that lie in so whatever set of principles are required to understand the process is what is known as theory so we became very clear with three terms here hypothesis theory and what is hypothesis testing now to make this further interesting i have a very simple example for you let's assume that a average age on which a baby starts to walk is 14 months now this is a very standard consideration that we taken i am doing some research on kind of vitamins that could be used for that baby and i come up with a finding that if a baby is constantly given those vitamins the baby might start to walk at a age of 8 months now here is where i am trying to apply my research to a sample of population to a group of babies that i am doing the research on and if my results turn successful i would apply that on the whole of the population and there is where we test the hypothesis whenever we are saying the first basic statement that babies on an average walk at 14 months we can have a little of variation that is taken into account so that could be plus minus 1 to 2 standard deviation as we have previously seen in our normal distribution curve now this distribution curve let's say there is a plus minus variation of 2 months so i can say a baby might start to walk from a range of let's say 12 months to 16 months as per the standard definition that we say but with this vitamin dose a baby might start to walk at 6 months to 10 months so this is how we have the plus minus variation or the plus minus standard deviation variation on the normal distribution curve that we have already seen so the whole idea here is what we are studying we are studying only a sample once we have a successful result from that sample we would apply it to the whole of the population now what is the whole logic of this hypothesis testing is again very very interesting the first thing that we try to understand is if i say babies start to walk at 8 months that means the vitamin dose that i am giving is effective if the babies do not start to walk at 8 months that means the vitamin dose that is given is not effective so what we are trying to understand is whether the hypothesis that comes in is accepted or rejected whether we are focusing on a research proposition or 
we are talking about a null hypothesis that we would understand just in a while. But here, what we are trying to decide is whether there is such an effect by seeing it. If it is unlikely, then there is no such effect. So, what we are trying to find out is whether vitamin has an effect or does not have an effect. Now, once we have this thing that is very, very clear in mind, we understand what is a research hypothesis vis-a-vis -vis a null hypothesis. Coming back to my original statements. So, I have two group of population. Population group 1 and population group 2. Now, in population group 1, I have kept all the babies who take the vitamins. In population 2, we have kept all the babies who do not take vitamins. Okay, what would happen? I have a baseline for walking that is 14 months as we have already considered before. Now, this is not uh, actual finding but yes, for this case, we have taken this as 14 months, let's assume. Now, if I predict the children or the baby who are consuming vitamins start to walk early in contrast to population 2 which walks at an age of 14 months. So, there is no early walking symptoms that are seen in population 2. That means what happens between the two? There is difference in the population. One is on a vitamin dose, one is without a vitamin dose and the predictions that are coming is different for the two population because there is a difference in the population and this is what is known as research hypothesis. So, under research hypothesis, what is also known as alternative hypothesis, we try to predict that there is a difference between the population because of which there is variation in the result that is seen. Coming on to a second case. In the second case, we predict that be it population 1, be it population 2, the babies who are consuming vitamin dose or babies who are not consuming vitamin dose, both start to walk at the same age. So, the age would remain same in both the cases. What does this mean? This means there is lack of difference in the population. My findings remain same for population 1 as well as population 2 and this is what is opposite of your research hypothesis and hence is known as null hypothesis. So, we understand what is a difference between an alternative hypothesis and a null hypothesis. Now, since we have understood both, it's very important to note here, if one is true, the other has to be false. If I am saying null hypothesis is true, that both start walking at the same age, I cannot say that population 1 walks early. So, if my null hypothesis is true, that means my alternate hypothesis is false. And vice versa, if my alternate hypothesis is true, my null hypothesis comes to be false. So, this is a basic understanding of alternative hypothesis vis-a-vis -vis a null hypothesis. Coming on to one another important term that is comparison distribution versus cutoff score. Now, what is comparison distribution and cutoff score? Let's understand this again. Comparison distribution is a distribution that we are trying to use in a hypothesis testing. So, it represents the population. It represents a population situation if the null hypothesis is true. So, considering my null hypothesis true that both start to walk at a same age, I am trying to explain the population situation. And it is this distribution that helps you to compare the score based on the sample results that are obtained. Now, if there is any variation in the comparison distribution towards the extremes, we could say, we would have the cutoff scores that would be taken into consideration. So, when we say 2%, we are talking about the critical value. And if 
a sample is reached or exceeds that critical value or that uh, that normal value normal sample we say it is a extreme we get an extreme value and this is where we have the cutoff score or the extreme samples that we try to understand which are also known as critical value so coming back to the comparison distribution versus a cutoff score we need to understand that if we are setting the same example where we are trying to understand that we are rejecting the null hypothesis my null hypothesis was what my null hypothesis was there is no difference between the age of walking for population a versus population b if that hypothesis is rejected that means there is a difference in the age of walking between population group a and population group b now what would happen in the vitamin research if i say uh, let's take the results were less likely than 2% that means the normal 2% be it at the bottom of the curve or be it at the top of the curve be it on the either extreme of the curve there is a extreme value that is seen and there is where we focus on the cutoff score so cutoff score is very very important to understand the comparison distribution and to decide a result which is focusing on the extreme even though when you are trying to reject this null hypothesis so a very fundamental aspect that you need to understand here is a difference between a research hypothesis which is an alternative hypothesis in contrast to a null hypothesis so if when we are trying to predict the difference in the population it is a research hypothesis when there is lack of difference of the population it is a null hypothesis both stand opposite to one another so if one is true the other has to be false we would be covering more details under the next section on statistics